Hello, welcome to this video discussing absolute convergence and also conditional convergence and the difference between them. Okay, it turns out that an infinite series is called absolutely convergent if when you make all the terms positive and add them up and you end up with a convergent series, that's a stronger type of convergence. We put the tag absolute convergence on it. Okay. So those absolute value bars serve to make every term positive. That's all. Okay. It's a stronger type of convergence. We'll see why in a few slides. Okay. So there's, there's going to be two parts that we're concerned with. There's other types of convergence, but, but two types of convergence that we'll be concerned about. It is absolute convergence or conditional convergence. And so you converge absolutely if you take the absolute value and that gives you convergence. Making every term positive gives you convergence. Okay, so there's this there's this umbrella of convergence, and inside of there, there's different different um, categories. There, there's absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. So if you're absolutely convergent, you're definitely convergent. That's not like you're breaking it or anything like that. What we're saying is that there's this stronger type of convergence called absolute convergence. Okay, if the series of absolute value converges, then the original series also converges. Okay. All right, great. Now, if the series of absolute value diverges, you can still recover convergence on the original series. It's a weaker type of convergence. Okay. If you go back and then look at the alternating series test on the original series and you see that it converges while the original with the absolute value bars thrown in diverges, what that's called is conditional convergence. An infinite series that is conditionally convergent it means that the series with all the positive and the negatives is convergent while the absolute value series is divergent. Okay. All right, great. I have a nice flow chart on the next slide for you that basically um, gives you exactly the flow about how you should attack a problem when asked absolute convergence versus conditional convergence versus divergence. Okay, so here's the flow chart. You start off by taking the absolute value of all the terms. If that's convergent, you're done. That's the definition of absolute convergence and thus convergence. But when that guy diverges, the story's not over. You want to try the alternating series test on the on the original when the, when the negatives are in there. If that gives you convergence, then that's conditional convergence. Now, if the alternating series test doesn't work, and there's probably another test behind the scenes that's going to work as his partner, um, given the opposite result. It's called the test for divergence. OK, and if that if that works on the original series, then that's just divergence. There's not levels to divergence for us. It's just going to be convergence with two levels versus divergence, okay? And so the question has to be worded in, in a very particular way for you to consider all of this. Only go with this route if the question is worded. Determine whether the series is absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. That's when you go through this flow chart, okay? Now, if you try to use a test like the ratio test or the root test, that have absolute values already baked into it, then if you, if you want to use that on the original, there is no chance for conditional convergence. Okay, you, your only two options are absolute convergence or divergence. That's why when we had the ratio and root test, I put the term absolute convergence in front of it because there is no such thing as conditional convergence when you work with those two tests. And so, um, let's take a closer look at the difference between these two types of convergence. Why is absolute convergence stronger than conditional convergence? Okay. It, it, it comes in rearranging the terms. Now you're adding up infinitely many numbers. So why should juggling the terms mean anything? It shouldn't. Why isn't that the same sum? It makes no sense why that would be a different sum. Well, when you have conditional convergence, something very strange happens. When you have absolute convergence, it's exactly as we said, you know, if your series is absolute convergent, 
and your sum is equal to s, whatever it might be. I don't care how you rearrange the terms, they will always add up to s, that same sum. That's what, you, that's what should happen, right? But let me tell you, when you have conditional convergence, that does not happen. It turns out that when you have conditionally convergent, you could basically make the sum be anything you want it to be. It's very strange, okay? You give me any real number, and I can pretty much rearrange the term some kind of way to equal that number. It's ridiculous. It's weak. Absolute convergence is strong. It makes sense. You know, you rearrange it, you get the same sum. Conditional convergence is weak. You rearrange it, you can get another number. It's really strange. Um, the most famous series that's conditionally convergent is the alternating harmonic. I have a whole video on it um, earlier in the in the set of um, videos. And um, we'll learn that it adds up to the natural log of two. Okay. So you start with one and you subtract a half and then you add on a third and you take away a fourth. Now, remember now the original harmonic diverges, but the alternating harmonic converges. That is the definition of conditional convergence. If you take the absolute values and you get divergence, but you put the alternating sign back on and you get convergence, that's conditional convergence. So this is our standard conditional convergence series. And we will know later for sure that it adds up to the natural log of two. All right. So now I'm going to do some math magic and um, make it add up to something other than log two. It's crazy. All right. So what I'm going to do is take this equation. Think of it as like an equation. The, uh, the terms on the left hand side and then ln two on the right hand side. And I'm going to multiply both sides by a half. Legal algebra, okay, let's distribute. Well, half minus a fourth, sixth minus an eighth, and so on. And so, right-hand side is still one half the natural log of two. All right, now I'm gonna juggle and sleight of hand introduce some zeros. It's, it's pretty absurd. Okay, I can, I can add zero, right, that's fine. So I'm going to throw in some zeros. It's very strange. And I'm going to take this particular series, zero plus a half plus zero minus a fourth. I'm only getting the uh, the even guys um, in the denominator. And I'm going to add it to the original series. The original series, adding in this other series that has the half and the negative fourth and the sixth and the negative eighth and so on. Watch what happens. It's crazy. On the left hand side, think vertically here. You get a one, then you get a zero. Then you get a third, then you get a zero. Oh, wait, wait, you don't get a zero. Now they line up. What does negative a fourth and negative fourth add up to? Negative a half it basically fills in the spots where you had the zero before. So you're gonna get the half and the third and the fifth and the seventh for sure. You're gonna get all the odd guys in the denominator. Okay, and the odd guys are positive, aren't they? Yeah, the odd guys are positive. And it looks like the even guys are canceling. You kind of set it up that way. But the way it's lined up, every other even guy cancels, but but not the, not, not. So negative a fourth and negative fourth give you negative a half, okay? Negative an eighth and negative an eighth give you negative a fourth. Those guys get filled back in. We are looking on the left-hand side at exactly the original series. One, if I juggle it, minus a half, plus a third, minus a fourth, plus a fifth. If I kept going, I would have gotten minus a sixth and on and on forever. I have the original series. But if I add the right-hand sides, I don't get natural log of two. 1 log 2 plus half log 2 is 3 halves log 2. And that's just crazy. That's mind-blowing. How could I have the same terms but a totally different sum? It's because you're conditionally convergent. That's the weakness in it. And so therefore, we get the fact that conditional convergence is very different than absolute convergence. It's a weaker form of it. You can make it add up to anything you want. <laughs> very strange. All right, in the next set of videos, we'll do a bunch of examples of trying to decide absolute versus conditional versus divergent. 
And then that'll be the end of this uh, set of videos. Thank you very much. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Comment down below, reach out to me, um, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.